Jennifer Griffin is at the Pentagon, and uh, Jennifer, you have been gathering information, and I'm able to talk with generals about it. One of the things that you said that everybody keeps coming back to, and I want to hear from the president as soon as the team in the control room says that we can, about opening that door on how this may not have been intentional. Now, Jennifer, you just heard General Deptula say, well, it wasn't like somebody set their coffee cup down and it was that kind of an accident. Um, but this speaks to the issue of what you're saying. Well, who's in charge now? Well, I think who's in charge, uh, unless uh, we see evidence otherwise, it's still the supreme leader of Iran, Khamenei, who's in charge. And then you have the civilian leadership of President Rouhani. And then you have the IRGC, the Iranian mm -hmm. Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Qasem Soleimani, the general, a top general there. Um, it is hard to imagine that with such a sophisticated uh, SAM missile, surface-to-air missile, that it was a rogue unit of the IRGC. That being said, uh, the president uh, has intelligence, and he is uh, aware of things that we are not aware of right now. And he also has a larger strategic purpose in terms of bringing the Iranians back to the negotiating mm -hmm. table. And so the military is providing him with options. They're going to be calibrated options, but they are going to be options designed to send a signal. From my read of hearing that there's a 3 p.m. meeting in the Situation Room with a bipartisan group from Capitol Hill. And and uh, the, these, uh, the urgency of the meetings and the way in which the Pentagon is rolling out the evidence of where this drone was, it suggests to me that there will be military action. What that military action is at this point, it's hard to say. Uh, my guess is they're going to take out that SAM missile um, uh, because they do know the location of where it was fired from. Uh, but that being said, those options were presented to the president. It's also important to point out and remind people, Harris, that international uh, airspace and international waters run 12 nautical miles from the shoreline of Iran. It's uh, when we heard from the top uh, U.S. Air Force general in charge of combined operations over the Gulf just moments ago here at the Pentagon, he made it clear that this uh, Global Hawk drone was flying 20 miles from uh, Iranian, uh, from the spot where the surface-to-air missile was fired. So it is outside of Iranian territory, according to the U.S. military, and that is significant, and that is why the president is going to feel a need to respond. All right. Let's hear from the president of the United States moments ago in the Oval Office on these topics. Watch. Fortunately, that drone was unarmed. It was not, there was no man in it, and there was no, it was just, it was over international waters, clearly over international waters, but we didn't have a man or woman in the drone. We had nobody in the drone. Are you still open? It would have made a big difference, let me tell you. It would have made a big, big difference. Uh, I have a feeling, I may be wrong, and I may be right, but I'm right a lot. I have a feeling that it was a mistake, but it was a very foolish move. That I can tell you. And there was the president talking uh, about the specificity of how this could have happened and maybe a mistake. But he, he said, if this had been a man drone, a very different situation. Uh, General Deptula, Jennifer, was giving us an idea of just how large these craft are, a wingspan larger than a 737. So, you know, some people out who are watching may wonder, well, how could it have been manned at this point? Why would we need to do it? Uh, and, and that the largeness of this, for lack of a better word, really enormity in terms of what most people think of when they think of a, a drone speaks to the issue of, of what we can do in the skies and how far away we can be uh, from different countries. Well, I think uh, this is a, uh, the reason that this is unmanned is that uh, it diminishes the, the risk to U.S. military personnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's unfortunate whenever a drone like this is shot down is that it tells the enemies and adversaries what our capabilities are. And the U.S. military has incredible surveillance capabilities. Our allies know that. And now, unfortunately, our enemies also know that. Uh, that Global Hawk is worth about $180 million. So it's, a, it's an expensive loss. Uh, there aren't enough drones in the U.S. military. There's a, a demand for these drones all over the world. Uh, so it is a loss, but I think the president is drawing a clear line that there was not a loss of U.S. military personnel's right. uh, lives, and that would change the calculation in terms of a military response or any response at all. And I think he's drawing a very clear line there that any U.S. military personnel who are killed by Iranian actions, there's going to be a very different response. So I think that is a significant 
messaging that was taking place just moments ago.